Today, we're going to learn about the fourth type of function that we're going to deal with this year. That's the exponential function. We're going to do some basic investigation with the graph y equals 3 to the power of x. Notice that the x is in the exponent. That's why we call it an exponential function, because the unknown is in the exponent. All right, so just like we've always done, when we don't know the shape of a graph, we pop down our table, get some grid paper, and we get ready to draw. So let's substitute x equals minus 2 into the function, and we get 3 to the power of negative 2. And I'm hoping that you remember your exponential laws, and you'll get 1 over 9. If not, use your calculator. Then we pop 1 over 9 into our table, and we do this all over again with minus 1, and we pop a third into our calculator. And then we find f of 0, and we get 3 to the power of 0, which I hope you remember is equal to 1. So we pop 1 into our table. Then f of 1 is going to just give us 3. f of 2 is going to give us 9. We pop that in our table. Now let's plot our points. Starting at x equals minus 2, x is minus 1, 0, 1, and 2 hoping you're starting to see a general trend of what this data looks like. Now, next step is just to connect the dots with a nice smooth line. Alrighty, so that is our exponential function. Let's take a look at the characteristics of this graph. Well, we can see that there's a y-intercept, and that y-intercept is at 0, 1. One thing we should think about is that 3 to the power of x could never equal 0. There's no possible number you could plug in for x that would make that equal to zero. Three to the power of zero is one. Three to the power of negative one is one over three. Three to the power of one is three. So there is no value that will make this equal to zero. That means that there is an asymptote at play, and that asymptote is y equals zero, which is also the x-axis. It's important to remember that exponential functions have one horizontal asymptote. Okay, so now we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to draw a second graph to show you something else. So let's draw y equals 1 over 3 to the power of x. You'll notice the x is still in the exponent, so it's still an exponential function. So let's do our usual. Let's plug in x is equal to negative 2. So we get 1 over 3 to the power of negative 2. Now, if we remember our exponential laws, 1 over 3 can be written as 3 to the power of negative 1 which would then simplify to 3 to the power of 2, which would give us 9. Okay, if you're not so comfortable with all of that, feel free to use your calculator, but do try and understand it. Now, f of minus 1 will get 1 over 3 to the power of negative 1, which just gives us 3. f of 0 will give us 1. And then f of 1 will give us a third. f of 2 will give us 1 over 9. So let's plot these points that we've been given. First, where x is equal to minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. And let's connect the dots. Hmm, it's pretty interesting. And if you've noticed that now this graph looks a little bit different. Okay, let's just look at its characteristics before we move on. So the y-intercept is still at 0, 1. And we know that a third to the power of x also can't equal 0, so that must mean that there's an asymptote at y equals 0. So let's compare the two. So this was the first one on the left, and there's the second one on the right. Hmm. Do you notice that they're going in opposite directions? If we look at the one on the left, we can see that it's increasing. So it starts from the bottom and goes to the top from left to right. And then, conversely, the one on the right is decreasing. It starts from the bottom and then goes down. So looking at these graphs together and using y equals b to the power of x instead of a specific number, we can draw some conclusions about b. Let's first start with some constraints. b cannot equal zero. If you had zero to the power of something, everything would just be zero. It wouldn't be an exponential function. It would just be the line y equals zero. Because 0 to the power of 1 is 0, 0 to the power of 2 is 0. Similarly, we can't have b equaling 1, because 1 to the power of anything would also just be 1. So we would have a straight line, not an exponential graph. And then there's one more that might not seem as obvious, but b cannot be negative. Now let's look at y. Let's imagine that b was negative 3. 
So let's say negative three to the power of one is negative three. Let's plot that really roughly on the graph. There it is. All right, so what about negative three to the power of two? Well, a negative times a negative will give me a positive, so that'll be nine. Let's plot that pretty roughly. What about negative three to the power of three? That'll give me negative 27. Do you see that here we're not creating a smooth function? We're creating one dot at the negative, one dot at the positive, then at the negative, then at the positive. It wouldn't create a smooth function. So that is why b cannot be negative. But let's have a look at what we have here. So b can be greater than one, like we saw in the blue graph. And when that is the case, it is an increasing graph. Similarly, b can be between zero and one. So it can't be negative, but it can be a fraction between zero and one. And when we have a fraction between zero and one, then we're going to have a decreasing graph. So that's a pretty cool generalization. We haven't even started with the standard form of the exponential function. And we've already learned something about the shape. Let's see what else happens if we change our b value. Let's start with four instead of three. All right, what about two instead of three. Well, do you notice that as B increases, the graph becomes steeper? If you're unsure, think about which one you'd want to climb. Would you rather climb up four to the power of X or two to the power of X? I don't know about you guys, but four to the power of X seems like it would be much harder. So that's when B is greater than one. Then we can say if B is bigger, then the graph is steeper. Let's see what happens when b is a fraction between 0 and 1. So there's our original graph of the third to the power of x. What happens if we get a quarter to the power of x? Okay. And then a half to the power of x. Again, we can see that there's a difference in steepness. We can see that a quarter to the power of x is much steeper than a half to the power of x. But be careful here. As b decreases, the graph becomes steeper because a quarter is less than a half. When in doubt, ask yourself, would you rather have half a cake or a quarter of cake? Then you'll know which is less. When we're dealing with fractions, as the fraction gets smaller, the steeper the graph becomes. So that's the impact of B. Now, let's start looking at our standard form. The actual standard form of an exponential function in grade 10 is Y equals A times B to the power of X plus q. So let's just start by looking at what a does. So looking at our original increasing function of 3 to the power of x, we're going to now change our a value. Now if we had to ask ourselves what is the a value there, I hope you know that it's 1, because it's 1 times 3 to the power of x. So let's change that. Let's make that a negative. Now some of you might be wondering, why is b now a negative? Didn't I just say that b couldn't be negative? Stay with me. You need to remember something really important. Negative 3 to the power of x is not the same as negative 3 in brackets to the power of x. The x applies only to the 3, not to the negative without those brackets. So actually, negative 3 to the power of x is the same as saying negative 1 times 3 to the power of x. So here, we've changed our a from a 1 to a negative 1. And I hope that you can see that when we change that value of a from positive to negative, it actually flips the graph upside down. You can see that the horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 still holds for both of the graphs. So a, once again, tells us the shape, but not entirely, because b also tells us a bit about the shape. So let's find out what exactly a tells us about the shape. Well, when a is greater than zero, like in the blue graph here, we can see that the graph b above the asymptote. And then when a is less than zero, like the orange graph here, we can see that the graph will be below the asymptote. So it actually tells us where we can expect our graph to be. So let's see if this holds true if b isn't greater than one, if it's between zero and one. So let's have a look at f of x equals a third to the power of x. Now I'm going to make that a a negative one, and we've got j of x is equal to negative 1 over 3 to the power of x. A reminder again that that's negative 1 times 1 over 3 to the power of x. Again, it flips it over. So this holds true. If a is greater than 0, it's above the asymptote. If a was less than 0,
zero is below the FM code. So now we know about A. And as usual, let's see what Q does. First, let's remind ourselves about this blue graph. It has a y-intercept at 0, 1, and it has an asymptote of y equals 0. What happens if we change this q value? If we plot 3 to the power of x plus 1, we can see that it's actually shifted up 1. In fact, now, instead of a y-intercept of 0, 1, it's 0, 2. And our asymptote is now y equals 1 instead of y equals 0. So everything seems to have shifted up 1 unit. All right, so what if we say 3 to the power of x minus 1? Well, I'm hoping that you were expecting this. We can now see that our y-intercept is 0, 0 instead of 0, 1. So that's shifted down one unit. And our asymptote is now y equals minus 1 instead of y equals 0. So just like before, the q tells us our vertical shift. But it also tells us our horizontal asymptote just like it did with the hyperbola. This holds true no matter the value of b. If b is between 0 and 1, this still holds true. It'll simply shift it up or down, and in grade 10, the q value will always represent your horizontal asymptote. So now, all that's left is figuring out how to sketch this graph. Sketch the graph of y equals 2 times 2 to the power of x plus 2. That's a lot of 2s. Let's see what it looks like. First things first, I'm going to need some graph paper. Then I'm going to want to identify all the components. I can see A is 2, B is 2, and Q is 2. All right, step one is going to be figuring out what A tells us. Because A is 2, it's greater than 0, so this means that we can expect our graph to be above the asymptote. Now the next step is going to be figuring out what B tells us. Because b is greater than 0, it's 2, it means that our graph is going to be increasing. So it's going to look a little something like this at the end of the day, above the asymptote and increasing. Then the next step is going to be the asymptote. And I hope you remember from our previous slides that this will be y equals q, which in this case is y equals 2. As soon as you have your asymptote, you should plot it. And don't forget to label it. Then step four is to find the y-intercept. And in order to find the y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to zero. So we're going to take our equation, and wherever we see an x, we're going to make it zero. And we're going to say 2 to the power of zero is 1. 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 plus 2 is 4. So we know that our y-intercept is the point zero, 4, so we can plot that straight away. Next step is to find the x-intercept. And we do that by setting y equal to zero. So we say 0 is equal to 2 times 2 to the power of x plus 2. Let's move that plus 2 over and then divide both sides by 2. Now we've got negative 1 is equal to 2 to the power of x. And I'm really hoping that this is ringing some bells because that's not possible. 2 to the power of x can never be negative. Do you remember, we discussed this as a reason why b couldn't be negative. So that means that there are no x-intercepts. All right, now on to the last step. We're going to substitute another x value to find any other point. This is mostly to make it easier to draw. It's also not entirely necessary, but I like to do it just so that I have an extra point in there to make sure it's really accurate. I'm going to use x is equal to 1. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to substitute a 1. So y equals 2 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 2 which equals 4 plus 2, so 6. So now I've got the point 1, 6, and I'm going to plot that right there. Now all that's left is drawing my line, which I know should be an increasing graph above the asymptote. So let's have a look. There it is. OK, guys, that's all you need to know about exponential functions for right now. Now it's your turn to practice. Good luck.